you guys. Well, it's perfect. It's summertime. It is glorious outside. And I want to introduce you to one of my absolute favorite trees of all, the magnificent Palo Verde. We planted this tree in tribute to our old pit bull, Dakota. He was 10 years old and had bone cancer. He was such a sweet dog. Here you can see the tree when it was first planted in July of 2018. This tree has grown probably about four feet this year alone. Here's a picture from May of 2019 when it was in full bloom. Look at all the green branches on this Palo Verde. He is just glorious. He is green right down to the trunk. Now this is a special Palo Verde. It's a cross between a blue Palo Verde, a foothill Palo Verde, and a Mexican Palo Verde. Meet Desert Museum. It's a great landscape tree. It's thornless. It's drought tolerant, has beautiful blossoms and trunk, and also it's fast growing and doesn't get much more than 15 to 25 feet tall. He'll be a great shade for my chickies. Hi chickies, good morning chickies. So right here you can see one little blossom. And the reason that there's only one little blossom on this Palo Verde is because she's already bloomed. We are in July here and she will bloom again. She's getting ready to put forth some more flowers. Blue Palo Verde blooms sooner than the foothill. I will utilize the beans and the flowers. It is slightly related to the pea family. And it will have these little pea pods that look somewhat like an edamame. And they're edible, they taste like peas. You can eat them raw, though they are better to blanch. Trust me, you don't want to get the bubble gut because the bubble gut's real. It's an enzyme in the Palo Verde beans. And very similar to uh, undercooked uh, pinto beans. It's okay to eat the seeds without blanching them, but trust me on this, when I was, I was harvesting some one day and oh my goodness, I got the worst, I'm not saying gas like I was ripping ass all day long. It was, I, it was high intestinal gas, which is um, from the enzymes in the beans. So I definitely recommend blanching them. When I blanch them, I do fine. You can add them to stews, you can throw them on a salad. Uh, you can also take the beans out of the brown pods. Let's see, here's one. This is gonna be one from last year. And just know, do not eat them if you find them on the ground. So you can hear it. It's the brown pod. Looks like a little baby pinto bean. You sprout them and you can eat them like that. All right, we're taking a walk to the backyard here and I'm going to show you a native Palo Verde, which happens to be called the Foothill Palo Verde. And she is glorious. So you can see some of her blossoms and I'm gonna show you the pea pot. This here is the Foothill Palo Verde. And look at, see those beautiful flowers. The difference between the blue Palo Verde and the Foothill Palo Verde is now they all have little leaves. Uh, like I showed you on the Desert Museum. But look at how tiny these leaves are. You can see here the leaves on the ends of these little branches. And that is a, a sign of the Foothill Palo Verde. Also, another thing, uh, with the Foothill Palo Verde, the seed pods sink in. Look at how it hugs each seed like that. And the foothill blooms a little later than the blue Palo Verde. You can see the trunk color. It's a little more yellow-green. I, th I like the flavor of these. These are really good. There's a spike, right? Can you see my hand? It spikes right on the ends of the 
little wispies. Um, it's like at the node, there's like a little node right there. So this is what I have been talking about with the Palo Verde, the seed pods right here. Look at that. These are delicious. Okay, right there. <laughs> mm, that is, that one is perfect. Yep, these are good. Never take your native plants for granted because you know what, they could save your life. <laughs> if you're lost and out in the wilderness with no food, the Palo Verde. Here are the flowers right here. And I will take a couple of these and I put them in avocado coconut oil. I will just infuse the oil with the flowers. This is what I do. And I always recommend testing the oil, testing the seeds before you go gung ho. And I suggest uh, do a little test area, see how it reacts to your skin. In Native American medicine, uh, it's used uh, for to help arthritis. And I love, I love it. I actually put it on minor abrasions. That is what I do. Like I said, I always recommend people testing it on their skin, do a small little skin patch and see how it works for them. Here is my basket of seeds. I'm just gonna do a little batch and I am going to just blanch them. Helps them to break down a little bit better in our systems. They taste really good. Tastes like a snow pea or a field pea. So yeah, let's go blanch these. And your Palo Verde seeds are ready to go. Mm. They're good. They taste like peas and really good. To check out some of my other videos where I talk about other native edibles to my area, click the card right here. Uh, to check out Malva Silvestri, click the card right here. Or another one, Stinging Nettle. Click the card here. Or purse lane. Yep, lots of good ones. Stay tuned for another episode coming up real soon. Thank you for joining me in my garden. Uh, my favorite place to be. Blessings to you. Peace. You know who else loves the Palo Verde? Our bees. Bees absolutely love the flowers of the Palo Verde. I don't blame them. <laughs>